Hello. Um, I have been wanting to do a few follow-up videos for quite some time. And one of the topics that's been on my mind is talking about um, some post-surgery surprises. So I felt like going into the surgery, I had done my best to uh, research what I was going to face, what to expect, what my recovery would be like. But ultimately, um, I definitely found out that there were a few surprises. So I just thought, um, you know, if you are facing this surgery, you're going to want some of the information that I did, and you're going to be looking for um, some answers to some questions you had. So I thought it might be helpful to give you a little bit of information about what I found to be a bit surprising. So uh, these are in no special order, they're very random, but I would say the first and most surprising thing to me, even after all of my research about what I could expect, was that um, I woke up with a lot of stitches down there. Um, I was under the impression that I was gonna have a lot of internal stitching done. I was gonna have a lot of repairs to my vaginal wall to try to uh, provide structure and support so that in the future I couldn't have um, prolapses come back again. So basically, you know, if this is your vagina, I was told that I was going to have a lot of stitching done on all the sides of the vagina. Mine needed the most support on the anterior frontal side um, to prevent another cystocele so that my bladder would not prolapse through the vaginal wall again. So I expected that. Um, what I did not expect and maybe should have was that I woke up with, for lack of a better way to describe it, um, hole to hole stitches on the outside. And my doctor explained that that was because my pelvic floor was in such a state of disarray on the inside and the outside that he felt that I um, had what he called absent perineum. And this came from mostly my first delivery where uh, if you've watched my intro video, you know that I um, had a very rough delivery that required a fourth degree episiotomy. So at that time they just cut me hole to hole. I had internal and external stitches, a lot of repairs down there. Uh, and ever since then I have had a very weak pelvic floor, which is what was causing my stress incontinence where I would sneeze, sneeze, cough, walk down off a curb, jump, um, anything that caused any type of sudden uh, pressure there, then I was having urinary leakage that way. So he explained that if he didn't go in and, uh, you know, like if this is the pelvic floor, it's kind of described as like a basket or a bowl. Um, he had to stitch all along in here to resupport that area. And obviously in order to do that, that meant um, cutting all of that again. So he stitched the inside, stitched the outside, and told me that basically he recreated an entire pelvic floor and perennial support for me. So that was a big surprise and that was very uncomfortable. Um, a lot of my pain after the surgery was related to those stitches. I mean, it felt like having an episiotomy again and um, I specifically had one area of stitches really close to the vagina that it it just felt like it was stitched too tight. Like that one spot just really, really hurt and felt like it was stitched too tight um, for weeks. So those stitches were very uncomfortable and also a surprise to me. Uh, okay, next surprise was I knew that I was going to have vaginal packing, but several things about that vaginal packing were a surprise to me. So the vaginal packing is put in there for a patient like me that has a bunch of stitching done on the inside of the vaginal wall. Um, and it is basically there to prevent your vaginal um, walls from getting stuck together and during the healing process sticking. Okay, so they put this packing up inside there that prevents the vaginal wall from collapsing on each side, all of the sides, and then fusing back together. So um, right away, once I got home, because there's so many smells in the hospital, you're kind of like, oh, you know, everything just smells like hospital. But I got home and I realized that every time, especially when I would go to the restroom, I was like, what is that smell? It was just a very medical, chemical smell. And like, 
obviously I really have no idea what formaldehyde smells like, but that's what I always told my husband it smelled like. I was like, it's just very medical. It smells like, like an antiseptic formaldehyde-ish smell. It just was gross. Um, and I really, even after researching, couldn't figure out exactly what that was. I still don't know the exact name of it, but before they put that packing up in there, they soak it in like an antibacterial germicidal um, chemical to help prevent infection and odor. But uh, you will notice there's a very strong chemical, formaldehyde, strange antiseptic smell coming from you down there and that is what it is. And uh, whenever you actually remove your vaginal packing, you will really notice that smell because that packing is absolutely soaked in that stuff. So once it's out, you'll realize the smell was 100% coming from there. So um, again, about the vaginal packing, it's definitely one of the worst parts of the recovery because every time you go to sit, it just feels like I don't know. It felt almost like there was like a baseball or a softball in there. So when you, um, it felt better to lay down and it strangely enough felt better to stand, but sitting, it just felt like you were sitting on a softball or baseball inside your vagina. And I remember thinking like, how could this be so uncomfortable? Like, you know, you're picturing this vaginal packing in there and you're imagining that there's just enough in there, like maybe the size of a tampon or, you know, it's just a small amount of vaginal packing to fill your vagina. Well, once I pulled that vaginal packing out, I realized how uncomfortable it was. Um, in one of my recovery videos, I talk about pulling out that packing, so I don't want to go super into detail here, but um, there was a lot in there. I remember pulling it out and pulling it out and pulling it out and pulling it out and being like, oh my gosh, how much, how much is in here? And like, um, I had kind of had my husband like on standby outside the bathroom in case I felt like I needed him because I had read and heard that some women find the process really gross and they pass out. Not much grosses me out. Like I, I wasn't as concerned about that. And I also, to give you a little, I don't know, relief. Like I did not find it very painful. It was uncomfortable. It was awkward. I would not say it was super painful. Um, but I had this pile of packing just like in the floor of my shower because that's where I chose to do this. And again, more on that in another video. Recommendations for making it, I don't know, as non-awkward and least uncomfortable as you possibly can, pain-free as you possibly can. I suggest doing it in the shower with a shower head you're holding down there, spraying it on that area the whole time. But my husband came in the room afterwards and he also was shocked at the amount of packing that there was in the floor of the shower. Um, I have a video, a picture of that in that video as well, but we were trying to determine how much it was. And so like my husband stood there and he's like six foot three and we kind of like put the one end of it on the floor of the shower and then held it up to his head and then held another section of it up to his head and then another section of it, like half of him. So essentially there was, I'm sorry, we held it up to his entire length and then like another half of him. So essentially there was a, close to 10 feet of packing inside me, which is really crazy and sounds like a massive exaggeration, but it wasn't. Um, 10 feet of packing that the doctor had just like, you know, stuffed in there, stuffed in there, stuffed in there, like a couple of inches um, at a time. So that was a surprise, was not expecting that. Just be prepared when you go to pull your packing out, you're gonna be like, oh my gosh, now I know why it felt like I was sitting on a baseball. It's because um, it's a good, like large amount of packing on your shower floor that was up in there. Um, other surprises. Uh, I state in another video that I was very surprised how much um, burning I had from the hysterectomy aspect of things. Um, it, you know, like where those organs were. So imagine where your uterus was and you know, your fallopian tubes, those kinds of things. I'm assuming you'll have those removed as well. I, the first night I got home and then the next night again, had intense burning pain where those organs were on the inside. I would describe it as intense cramps, but that felt like somebody was shoving a hot poker inside there. Very, very painful. And I remember thinking, oh my gosh, like I don't even have a uterus. Like what could be, what is hurting in there? Um, 
And you know, it's probably just where I'm sure they use kind of like cauterizing tools to cauterize everything after they cut it out. So essentially they are kind of burning you like with a hot poker. And obviously that's going to hurt. I did not feel that in the hospital. They had me on really good pain meds, but once I came home, um, and you know, it would be at those times where my oxycodone, my prescription strength medication would be wearing off. So, um, don't let that happen. Like make sure round the clock, whatever your regimen is, every four hours you are taking that oxycodone to not let it wear off. Definitely in that first 48, I don't know, 72 hours, I would say make sure you are taking that pain medication around the clock. There's no reason for you to have to feel that. Set an alarm at night so if you actually are getting some solid sleep, you wake up to take those pills and you do not wake up to the hot poker burning sensation that I had. Um, related to that, Something else that was interesting to me was that for at least six months after my surgery, I still had cramps that felt like uterine cramps, like I would, you know, relate to having period cramps and I didn't have a uterus anymore. So I remember being like, what is going on? Like, how can I have cramps when I don't even have a uterus anymore? So I found some like hit or miss mixed information about that. I found um, some resources that would say that that is similar to like when an amputee has a limb removed, they kind of have like phantom pains where that limb was, you know, like if they have their leg amputated and they feel like they have pain in their leg and their calf and their thigh, whatever. It's like, you can't have pain in that area anymore. You don't have that organ anymore, but your brain is still thinking about those connections to nerves and, um, pain sensations in that area so you can still have that for quite some time so that was unique I um, remember thinking it was very weird to have cramps when I didn't have a uterus anymore but you know I would say after six months or so those subs have subsided I don't really get cramps anymore although because they left my ovaries intact I do still feel ovulation every month so or what I think is ovulation to be honest with you I don't track it anymore now that I'm not having periods I definitely am not like in my app tracking when I think that I'm ovulating but I will feel those pains or those twinges and be like oh yep I think this is the time when I'm ovulating even though I have nothing no bleeding to tie that to so yeah those were some surprises stitches down there I didn't expect strange odor from the packing I didn't expect how much packing, um, having strange uterine cramping sensations with the lack of a uterus. And um, I, I just was surprised how painful it was in a variety of ways. So again, this site is never intended to scare you, but it is to be very honest. Um, I was surprised how uncomfortable that super pubic catheter was. Maybe that shouldn't have been surprising, but it was really the last few days that I had it. I got it removed around day 10 and the last two days were pretty excruciating. And it was kind of just described to me as the super pubic catheter has a, um, almost like an inflatable balloon that's on the inner side inside your bladder. And then you just have the tube on the outside. So they basically puncture that tube inside you know if this is your abdomen um they puncture that tube inside there once the tube is inside the bladder they blow up a balloon and then that balloon is kind of like a bobber in there but it's also like preventing the tube from falling out you know the the balloon inside is keeping it from slipping out of your bladder well, when there's enough urine inside the bladder, you don't feel that bobber as much because it's kind of floating around in there. But by the end, the whole point is that there shouldn't be much urine in there after you have urinated. And um, so then you're feeling that bobber, basically that balloon floating around in your empty, fully drained bladder and it's very uncomfortable. And so um, you, you're like your mind tells you that you want to, urinate more often and maybe not drink much because you want to keep that bladder empty but actually it's quite the opposite you will be more uncomfortable if you have an empty bladder so they actually encouraged me to hold my urine for longer amounts of time not go on every little urge hold it for as long as I possibly could several hours if I could so that then that bobber that balloon was floating around liquid instead of just a completely dry bladder um 
so yeah those were post-surgery surprises but not the good kind of surprises so as usual feel free to comment with any quick not so personal questions or send me an email at personalprolapsestory at gmail.com continue to subscribe to the channel the more you subscribe the more you comment the more you watch and you refer people here the um more often i'm going to show up in searches for other women to find this information also if this is the first video that you have watched i have 15 16 other videos on here describing the surgery that i had done each step of my recovery, what it's like at one year and 15 months post-surgery, um, and describe my sur surgeries in depth as well as how I got here prior to surgery. So feel, feel free to check out those and thank you for, um, for being here and I hope you find this information helpful. Thank you.